apply CRISPR-Cas9 properly in agriculture. Already there are many CRISPR-Cas9 products in pipeline. Some got not from the regulators, especially in US, this one. This is basically a non-browning mushroom. So if you cut a mushroom or if you cut an apple, and if you keep it on your table, after a few hours, it will get black. So only one gene product does that, which is called polyphenol oxidase. So by CRISPR-Cas9, you know, uh, one scientist in University of Pennsylvania knocked down that uh, br uh, browning gene, and you can get a non-browning mushroom. So regulation has, regulatory, et cetera, has been done now. This will come, hit the market very soon. And this has been considered in US as a traditionally bred product, similar to traditionally bred product. Similarly, beer industry, those who are using uh, 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 hops for hop flavor of beer, that hop gene in yeast, you can modify by CRISPR-Cas9 and you can make hop free beer. Hop requires a lot of water and a lot of processing to make beer. So you can get rid of that uh, Hop production and downstream application of hop, you can save a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of water by just switching few two couple of genes by CRISPR-Cas9. Similarly, a self-pruning gene has been used uh, for large-scale uh, uh, food production in tomato, gluten-free wheat, waxy corn, decaffeinated coffee, spicy tomatoes, etc. People are using by changing single gene and giving rise a new product which is really beneficial for human consumption or uh, uh, for market. So companies and industries and institutes are doing this. And uh, in most of the countries, this has been considered as non-GMOs, and this has been considered similar to traditionally bred product and uh, is used. Now, a couple of general slides how this crispr cas fits in the big picture of designer product development or commercially viable product development for uh, 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 government organizations or uh, private organization. So whatever you do, uh, you have to do breeding, right? So there are two things, molecular breeding and trade design, both you can do. Then multi-generation genomic selection, and for trade design, you go from phenotype to genotype, you use omics and you use native traits and you make a product. Or you do the trade design from gene to phenotype through GMO pathway. We know issues with GMO, I'm not going into that. So in these uh, breeding design, native breeding design and molecular breeding design of product development pathway, CRISPR-Cas9 can play a very significant role to bring uh, a breeding product. So rapid functional validation of the target genes or target QTLs can be done by CRISPR. So once you know that, or once you know all the detail, then you can do diverse allele creation. Then diverse uh, allele creation could be uh, go to the rapid trait integration. And within a very short period of time, you can produce a product. Now, what are the requirement in this pathway? So rapid functional validation for that, what you need, you need an IP right or a FTO, freedom to operate using CRISPR-Cas9. You have to know or you have to learn or do editing, multiplexing and homology directed repair. And then you have to apply genomics to do this rapid functional validation. Then after that, in the next step, what you need, you need to do rapid knock out or knock down, that means modulation, gene from genomics, phenomics, bioinformatics, and then in the next step, what you need, regulatory modulation, you need to do allele swap, expression modulation, base editing, similar thing you can verify by tilling or SDN3, but for genome editing, uh, you, you do by genome editing, you know that switch to tilling if you need. Then in the next step, you do an allele swap and elite editing, your elite line transformation is needed. Molecular analysis is needed and haploid induction is needed. And finally, stack development is needed. In the rapid trait integration, you will uh, uh, need haploid induction and 
trans transgene free integration and you go to the commercial product development so these are the stepwise requirement for applying crispr cas9 uh, which we can visualize uh, for uh, commercial product development or uh, designer product development for agriculture so and finally the last two slides in this area i would uh, uh, we know that haploid induction plays an important role in commercial product development otherwise you need multiple generation to fix a certain gene in both the uh, allele and it requires many years so what commercial industries are using they use a tool called uh, haploid induction so after you make your product within one generation you can uh, make a double haploid so that all the genes in both allele are fixed so how this could be done so sanh3 or uh, uh, patatin like one uh, dad like one gene these kind of genes are there which basically makes change in centromeric proteins so uh, if you knock down that particular uh, gene then what happens after fertilization uh, one chromosome the male chromosome falls off for sanh3 so you get a single chromosome progeny which is known as haploid now you duplicate that there are many ways of duplicating so you get a double haploid so you make a single progeny uh, uh, chromosome uh, and you duplicate it so you get a fixed line soon there is a new discovery uh, uh, which uh, kellier and chu kellier et al came up with it's a great thing to change different bottlenecks and to introduce haploid induction and crispr together and it's it's a path breaking uh, discovery i would say and it can be used in many crops where transformation is not needed why transformation is a big problem for breeding because elite line transformation is still challenging many crops are recalcitrant to agro or biologic so you cannot transform certain crops what is a elite line even if you consider rice or wheat or whatever you take certain like i64 nippon bear this kind of rice you can transform but there are many elite rice lines indica lines still you cannot transform so elite line transformation is a big trouble now delivery of this crispr product inside of your cell line is a challenging and traditional integration is lengthy so these are the bottlenecks this can be really uh, changed by crispr cas9 how it could be done you take uh, a crispr cas9 made a uh, double haploid a uh, crispr cas9 made haploid inducer plan what happens you take a pollen which is haploid inducer pollen and it has a crispr cas9 tool in it and that use that pollen to fertilize a uh, 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 elite egg then what happens this is this pollen is changed or mutated in a senh3 gene so after fertilization and this pollen also containing crispr containing crispr cas9 tool after fertilization editing will happen so you will get a edit in the zygote then the male part of the male part male chromosome will fall off due to senh3 mutation centromeric region mutation so at the end what you will get you will get a single chromosome haploid progeny that haploid progeny can be doubled by making a double haploid in one shot so where it is what you are doing here in one shot in one experiment you are making a haploid along with a editing so again i am coming back you have a pollen which has a mutation in senh3 gene and which is also containing a crispr cas9 take that pollen and go to your uh, field and fertilize your uh, 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 elite line which you cannot transform just you uh, put the pollen inside of the elite line and the next progeny which you get in one shot it will be haploid and edited because the pollen has nh3 gene modified that senh due to this modification the male chromosome will fall off in the zygote only female chromosome will stay and also 
that uh, editor spam pull and contents CRISPR Cas9 that will do edit. So at the end, you will get a haploid line with edit, and the male chromosome will fall off, and it will carry along with. Uh, it will also carry the CRISPR Cas9 tool. So CRISPR Cas9 tool is removed, male chromosome is fall, uh, is off. You are getting a haploid. You just double it, get a double haploid. So this solves a lot of problems. What is the what it solves? No need of transformation. Just once you have to make this CRISPR mediated uh, elite line uh, haploid inducer. This sorry haploid inducer that haploid inducer and you collect that haploid inducer pollen. In this way, people have taken even uh, corn pollen and pollinated wheat. You can get haploid wheat in one shot. So these pollen can be used in different purposes by elite line uh, editing and elite line haploid production in one shot without doing any transformation or any, any laboratory based experiments. So, so this kind of path breaking CRISPR based tools are coming up in agriculture as well. And uh, people are greatly applying, industries are greatly applying this kind of things. I'm almost there. Uh, I need another 10 minutes. Do I have Shubhabrata? Yes, yes. Yes, you have. We, we have a 30 minutes up to your lecture, then the process. So uh, up oh. to 30 minutes you can use, no problem. Okay. So what happens then uh, worldwide, this is the regulatory status in present uh, CRISPR crops globally. So Canada, uh, Brazil, Colombia, and US, not regulated. And, uh, because CRISPR Cas9 mediated SDN1 is considered as uh, just similar to na uh, native breeding products. So, this, uh, and also in Australia, in Japan, we all know that in Europe still it is uh, banned because Europe has given a very strange decision that any new uh, muta mutagenesis technique comes under GMO. So that goes through proper, uh, that goes through lengthy regulation. Uh, although they are not considering the chemical or radiation mutagenesis products as a new mutagenesis product. So that is very strange. I know that many UK, Germany, France, these uh, governments, uh, UK, Germany mostly, and Spain, they, they uh, asked a European Commission to reconsider this verdict. And in India, it is still under discussion. If China, it is still under discussion. Uh, experimental uh, activities are allowed, but uh, product development is still under discussion. And both the countries haven't decided whether they will regulate it or not regulate it. So at least a big chunk of Latin America, US, Canada, and Australia, and Japan, you can use your genome edited uh, product in the market as a uh, non-regulated crop. And the last phase, the CRISPR water use efficiency, a case study I mentioned. So I completed uh, the basic application of CRISPR Cas9 in agriculture. And this is the last part which we worked few years back at International Rice Research Institute when I was a faculty there. And uh, I worked with uh, Professor Paul Quick, uh, C4 Rice Consortium uh, lead and uh, Professor Julie Gray from Sheffield University. We tried to apply, those were the early days of CRISPR in a plant. So in agriculture, we wanted to apply uh, CRISPR Cas9 and CRISPR CPF1 to change water use efficiency. So we know this picture shows the stomata. We know in the plant, in the leaves, in the stems, there are stomates. Basically what it does, carbon dioxide goes inside through this, so photosynthesis is influenced by these stomates opening and closing. And also oxygen and uh, uh, water uh, 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 path for the plant are these same stomates. So stomata are small pore-like structure located on leaves, stems surrounded by a pair of guard cells. And we know uh, in a drought condition, what happens? You have very little water in the soil. So what plants wants to do, it takes the water inside of its body, but wants to keep it. It doesn't want to uh, send that water out because in water is scarce. 
So you don't have much water, you want to store as much as water possible inside of the plant body. So if you can reduce this stomatal number in plant, then uh, less water loss will happen. More water will be stored inside of the plant body. If you see the crops or the plants which grow in the drought prone area, they have less tomato. But the plants like rice, wheat, etc., they grow, they cannot grow in a drought area, drought prone area or a very dry area. They have many stomachs to do as much as uh, water regulation possible. So we tried to change it. We tried to change it by CRISPR Cas9. We used both CRISPR Cas9 and also CRISPR CPF1. That time CPF1 was new, not used in plant. So this is the stomata development pathway for dicot, example Arabidopsis or monocot rice. Different uh, stomatal primordial cells during the goal, developmental uh, process of plant, different genes are involved in developing stomata, the guard cell, mature guard cell. So uh, now we targeted this OS EPFL9. This is a positive regulator, also known as Florigen gene, a positive regulator for stomata development. So we targeted this gene. How we did that? We used CPF1 and Cas9 both. So in two different experiments, this is the gene of uh, EPL, EPFL9. So we targeted exon one by CPF1 and Cas9 both. I, we know that from the PAM side, Cas9 will cut in uh, upstream, CPF1 cut in downstream. So uh, we used Cas9 and CPF1 in different experiments and we developed the edited plants. So we did sequencing, we did uh, surveyor assays and we found that there are edits and that edits are getting uh, transferred in the next generation as well. And then we did a sudden blot analysis to see that the CRISPR-Cas9 tool is segregated out in T2 generation. So here you see there is, this is the uh, EPFL9, CRISPR EPFL9, where you can see the CRISPR tool is present, but in our uh, edited plants, CRISPR tool is not present. So what we have, we have an edited plant where CRISPR tool is segregated out, only some changes in the EPFL9 gene. What, what was the uh, effect of that? So on the top, you see there are uh, yellow uh, stars. These are basically stomates. This is a wild type. When we do CRISPR-Cas9 or CRISPR-CPF1 edit, we get edited plant and there are only few stomatas. More than eightfold decrease of stomatas we could develop in a plant, in rice plant, which uh, by using CRISPR-Cas9 and CRISPR-CPF1. And when, you, when we use this plant for downstream analysis, we found that these plants, as there are much less tomato, they can hold more water inside. And as they hold more water inside, their water use efficiency is greatly enhanced. And that water use efficiency can be positively used for drought responsiveness. So similar activities, uh, and also what we did, we tried to see if there is any off-target or not. That time, we used some available algorithms, some softwares, so we targeted different first 20 possible off-target regions. We amplified those regions, cloned and sequenced, and we found there was no off-target in this particular uh, experiment. So, end of the day, what we received, we received the edited plant, only few uh, base pairs are changed. So one gene is knocked down or knocked off. Due to that knocking off, the number of stomata got reduced to eightfold. And this reduced stomata is the reason for more water storage or reason for drought, positive drought responsiveness. So similar research later on uh, carried out uh, uh, in uh, Sheffield. They also manipulated, overexpressed, and manipulated different other genes in that whole pathway. And they could see there are positive regulators, negative regulators. By knocking down positive regulators, you can increase water use efficiency by decreasing stomach numbers. And overexpressing negative regulator, again, you can decrease stomach number and increase the water use efficiency. So 
all this work you can see our work you can see in this plant cell report this was the early report where we show that crispr cas9 and cpf1 for targeting of a stomatal gene and also you can see the new phytologists later on came out uh, from Sheffield. Uh, we were also there where they did a detailed uh, understanding for drought tolerance by manipulating stomata using crispr cas Also that time Virginia Tech University suggest, uh, requested us to put a write up on this in their website. So uh, we, uh, I wrote that particular time. So this is how we can there are many ways, many pathways of improving water use efficiency. People are using it. It's very important for myriad pur purposes, different purposes of plant, not only drought responsiveness. It's a very important aspect, drought responsiveness, but there are many other things water use efficiency can manipulate for health of the plant. So this is one of the ways where by changing stomates, you can change water use efficiency greatly. So in conclusion, my last slide, uh, what happens next? So I tried to cover discovery of CRISPR, basics of CRISPR, how that system works. Then I tried to cover how it is applied in animal, human, plant, industrial biotechnology. Then I tried to uh, tell you guys about the agriculture and applications of CRISPR in agriculture. And then I showed a case study. But end of the day, it's a continuously moving field. A lot of new things are happening. But unless and until you use it for proper product development and bringing that product to the society, uh, end of the day, it will be only scientific, understanding scientific knowledge. But we have to translate that knowledge so that we get more product in pharmaceutical, in uh, gene therapy, in industrial biotechnology, in livestock breeding, in animal model development, and in agriculture. So if we try to uh, summarize that, we will see that continuous improvement of the toolbox is needed. Mostly this is protein engineering, and people are doing it. Many new and new uh, 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 Cas9 and modified Cas9, modified systems are coming up. So, and gradually CRISPR is becoming an engineering platform, a great engineering platform. There are certain bottlenecks. This needs to be uh, addressed and scientists around the globe are doing it. Delivery limitations are there. I was mentioning about nanomaterial mediated delivery, uh, different viral delivery. People are trying to improve those. Immune response, controlling immune response for animal and human health is important. Molecular, sorry, molecular precision is important. More and more editing efficiency improvements, so you don't need to do many experiments and uh, reduce cost. And end of the day, large scale manufacturing of all these products are very important. Next, delivery system engineering is also another one area people are working to improve. So that different delivery system, viral, injection based, for agriculture, uh, nanomaterial based, or agro modified agro based, whatever people are trying to do. So these are the areas continuous improvement is needed. And what would be the application pipeline in future or uh, where this field is going? So toolbox and protein engineering is the important part, as I mentioned. So different uh, epigenome modification for that protein engineering or genome modification uh, for that attaching multiple uh, protein molecules with the Cas9 and developing different kind of modified version. So this whole toolbox and protein engineering is very important. Followed by uh, AI and data mining, artificial intelligence plays a significant role here. So data mining, so huge biological data is available after a genome successful genome sequencing. We all know that genome sequencing is very easy nowadays huge pool of data can be uh, need to be curated and used properly so artificial intelligence and data mining is extremely important prediction of off targets prediction of very unique grna designing of very unique grna prediction of uh, uh, edits done by the cell 
So this kind of uh, artificial intelligence based uh, uh, tools are coming up. More and more will be needed, followed by manufacturing infrastructure. At the end of the day, this is how the whole thing will shape up. So you need supply chain, you need, uh, you need uh, reactors for large scale production of this CRISPR edited cell and uh, identify and uh, I'm bringing out different chemicals or important, uh, 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 important products for yourself. So automation, supply chain creation and large scale reactor system for fermentation and bringing out uh, new products from CRISPR modified organism is very important. So this is how I see the whole uh, uh, picture of the CRISPR-Cas9 field, its present status and future perspective. Thank you. Thank so you. I for questions, so I took, yeah. oh, I took one hour 20 minutes, sorry. No problem, we have a time. Uh, we, uh, uh, can, should I uh, minimize, uh, end, end your slide or you? Yeah, I can end my slide, no problem. So uh, there is a uh, there is a chat box and we pasted here a few selected questions. There are a lot of questions. I will mail you uh, after the talk. But here okay. we've selected few and uh, there is a lot of questions regarding the regulation in India, as you expected. And you clearly mentioned and uh, by the graph that where it is uh, and how the status worldwide. But still, there are uh, two three questions on uh, regarding this. And someone asks uh, that whether CRISPR is a good topic for PhD. So it, it's also interesting. So I, I gathered a few questions here. Uh, okay. Can you see that uh, in the chat box? Yes, yes. yes. So uh, first question, uh, Dr. Kosta Panda wrote that what is the current scenario of production of single cell protein as well as nutraceuticals using CRISPR approach? Yes, a lot of startups are there mostly Boston based and uh, uh, San Francisco based, uh, those who are working in these areas. And if you see some of the Netherlands company like VTT and others, they're greatly working on uh, CRISPR Cas9 based uh, high value chemical production, single cell protein production. And uh, I shown some of the, uh, it would have been good if I could go back to uh, my slide although, but should, can I do that? Okay. You can, so, you can do that. Yes. So uh, I'm not putting in a presentation mode anymore. Uh, let me just uh, get the, where are those? Can you see it? Sure, brother, you are yes, mute. Yes, 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 I can see it. Yeah, so, uh, but I don't see the questions anymore. Anyway, uh, yes, so, actually, in, in presentation mode, this uh, yes, so uh, I kept some of the examples uh, in the early uh, phase of my presentation where I showed applications in different fields. Uh, yes, it's here. So, people are using yeast, bacteria, algae, enzymes, plant cells, filamentous fungi uh, through organism selection organism development, process development, and scale, out and, uh, scale up and piloting. And uh, in the next slide, I kept this example of a VTT Industrial Biotech. This is a big company. They are working on different uh, smaller uh, 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 cell lines, uh, cell uh, organisms, to develop different nutraceutical chemicals. So this is one of the examples from Europe, but there are plenty startups and a lot of bigger companies they have also started using CRISPR-Cas9 uh, in, for engineering and similar kind of uh, uh, activities. So uh, yes, the answer is yes. There are many startups and many companies are doing. And we are also doing by using algal uh, uh, background. So from uh, algae and cyanobacteria, we are also developing many uh, new chemicals, novel chemicals which we are using for uh, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, best uh, organism mediated, uh, algae mediated uh, product development. The next question, Siddharth Mukherjee, hello, do you have some application notes in CRISPR in human personalized medicine with these clinical manifestations? 
Yes, so in my, uh, one of my slides, I uh, enlisted CRISPR applications in cancer, CRISPR applications in different disease, uh, genetic disease, infectious disease, then uh, uh, fertilization uh, related, uh, uh, embryonic development related disease modifications, etc. So please uh, check that slide. This will be available. All these slides will be available in the BioEngine website. So please check those. You, 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 you have many examples and many uh, uh, informations there. Then Mr. Bipan, um, I don't know, Bipan, uh, can we deliver CRISPR gene in useful fungi to control pest and disease? Yes, there are many papers uh, where people are using uh, CRISPR-Cas9 in fungi. There are many new, uh, size is still a problem for algae and fungi. Cell sizes are very small. So if you use a big Cas9 protein, then it is difficult. But there are uh, many smaller versions and modified versions of Cas9 people are using nowadays for uh, uh, trans, uh, uh, introducing CRISPR-Cas9 in algae and fungi both. Mohammed Gulab Rubani, what he is asking? No, then where is that? Uh, sorry. Three questions. What is the editing efficiency rate of CRISPR-Cas9 in plant? Can you use CRISPR-Cas9 for protein engineering? Uh, the first question is, it depends. So there are papers from Yiping Chi's lab in University of Maryland, Shaishia Gao's lab in Chinese Academy of Science, IGDB. They show 100% CRISPR-Cas9 editing in crop like rice, wheat, uh, a model plant like, uh, like Arabidopsis, etc. Now, this depends greatly, which I believe, which from my personal experience, depending on the target you are choosing. So you know that genome and DNA remains in a very folded uh, condition with different kind of structural uh, uh, formations. So if it's a apparently linear region, your gRNA can go and easily bind there. So in that case, CRISPR-Cas9 works in a very high efficiency. But in a complex region of the genome or complex region of your, uh, if the target falls in a complex region with different kind of fold, folded uh, orientations, then it becomes a little difficult and the efficiency goes down. Also, it depends on gRNA designing. You have to be very careful about gRNA designing, although nowadays different softwares are available. You can use those softwares for gRNA designing and you get options of best gRNA and different other gRNAs. So depending on the specificity of gRNA, efficiency also varies. Pooja asked if CRISPR-based editing accepted in India, especially for agriculture purposes. Yes, I mentioned that in India and China, it is under discussion. A lot of deliberations are happening to the government from, uh, from industry as well as from uh, 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 organizations like uh, ICAR, DBT, DST, etc. Scientists came up with different kind of documents. It's under discussion. It's still not uh, any uh, decision has been made by the government how they will they will allow if it, even if they will allow it either they will allow it as a native like US or Australia and other countries have made or they will regulate at GMO. So. Uh, that decision is still not made. So which class of algae are basically employed for biofuel production through CRISPR-based approach? Actually, all kind of algae, uh, mostly uh, uh, people are using this uh, uh, Chlamydomonas reinhardi for uh, 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 different kind of experiments. But for uh, applying, making uh, uh, your uh, industrial strain, different others are used based on your requirement. Some algal uh, strains are good for uh, biochemical, novel biochemical production. Some are good for oil production. So it really varies. Dr. Jainul Abid Khan, targeting plant viruses using CRISPR-Cas either by genome editing or crystallized base editing, which one is more efficient for the generation of virus resistant plant? Again, 
So virus resistance uh, uh, greatly depends on uh, many techniques. So uh, it depends on the virus, its uh, genomic uh, targets, which part you want to target. It, it depends on that. Nowadays, people are doing one uh, very intelligent trick where they are basically taking uh, different microRNA genes, changing that microRNA gene, and when that microRNA is expressed, it's basically give rise a modified microRNA, which is uh, which can bind and destroy uh, by RIS mediated uh, destroying pathway uh, uh, the viral target, which can bind with viral target and destroy it. So microRNA based pathway, VSI RNA based pathway and different straightforward targeting and, uh, uh, and uh, neutralizing viral elements are done. So depending on the virus, group of virus, depending on the target region you are targeting, uh, you can use base editing or you can use uh, large scale CRISPR-Cas9 or different other modified, as I mentioned, my modification of microRNAs uh, people are using. So one uh, patent is available online, which is called GIGS, JIGS. Please go through that. Uh, it's a new technology, one of the companies in UK, uh, they are using it and uh, they have this patent and uh, in a selective way, they can change these microRNAs and, uh, and uh, basically target viruses. Next question. Pooja, is it a good idea to work on CRISPR and PhD level? Look, CRISPR is a tool. Now, there are uh, different applications of CRISPR. You can work for uh, salinity tolerance uh, in plant. You can work for disease resistance in plant. If are, there may be many ways of uh, identifying that particular problem and solve that problem. CRISPR is one of that. Yes, in today's world, it is the most modern technology. So definitely working with it uh, would be a good idea. And second thing, there are also a field for CRISPR modification and CRISPR development. Labs like Jennifer Dudna, labs like uh, 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 Feng Zhang or other associated like David Liu, Yiping Chi, all these people are working, uh, Stanley Chi, all these people are working in the area of development of CRISPR tool. So that is also one area and could be a great pre, uh, uh, PhD topic, not one, many PhD topics actually. So the, the answer is yes. Sanjeev, what is the cost for editing one gene by CRISPR system? Okay, exactly I cannot tell you that, but it's very cheap because you just need a gRNA. It's just like a designing a primer. So uh, cost is very minimal. And Cas9 gene is, uh, uh, Cas9 protein is commercially available. So uh, that is also not very costly. So even I would say approximately with 7,000 to 10,000 Indian rupees, you can very much have one set of experiments and change one gene. So that is considered very cheap with respect to other system. Oshal Kumar, what is, what is your take on the regulatory aspect of geno edit crops in India? Is there any future hope for the plant biotech industry? When National General Reliance are taking big lead now, what is your take on regulatory aspect of Genelia in India? If there is any future hope for plant biotech industry, when? Yeah, I already answered this one uh, because, uh, uh, as I mentioned, it is under discussion. But definitely, many countries has uh, uh, accepting it, and that's a great hope. Unlike GMO, because GMO is still a great challenge and regulated. Every country, even in US, uh, where uh, they are very positive about technologies, but genome editing in US, Latin America, uh, 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 then uh, Japan, Australia, these countries, they have given green signal. So uh, there is every reason to hope for uh, uh, Indian uh, market as well. And I know China is, uh, I was in China last two years and very closely worked with their uh, regulatory divisions government regulatory uh, people I also work with. So I know that China is investing highest in the world in genome editing for human health, genome editing for agriculture, but still they haven't, they are making a lot of products, but uh, 
it shows that they will also come up green, it looks like. Otherwise, the government would have not invested so much in this area. In India also, uh, we feel the situation will not be like GMO. It will be much better than uh, a GMO situation. So uh, I'm hopeful.